Hi everybody, welcome to day two of IBM Edge. This is the Cube Silicon Angles production. We're going wall to wall, two day coverage here at IBM Edge in Las Vegas. Uh, we're at the Mandalay Bay, about 5,000 attendees here, the vast majority of which are customers, about 4,700 customers, and a bunch of course IBM was in partners. And this is year two of Edge. Last year was in Orlando, it was a smaller conference, uh, less than half the size here, it was sort of the inaugural kickoff of Edge. And Basically, what's happening now is IBM is expanding that. They're bringing in more systems content, more conversion infrastructure content, even pieces of the software business, and really trying to show the cross correlation and collaboration across IBM, the different divisions, uh, packaging up uh, a new vision for data infrastructure. Uh, in fact, Amboos Royale, the new general manager of the storage division, said yesterday, in his view, storage really should go away as a term, it's an antiquated term, it's outdated, and one that uh, he's trying to really change in terms of the vision that he's setting forth in the industry. I'm here with my co-host today, Stu Miniman. Uh, Stu, of course, is a network and virtualization cloud expert uh, with Wikibon.org. Stu, uh, you had a chance yesterday to to observe what was going on. One of the big themes here that we saw, we met, of course, with Nancy Pearson yesterday, was converged infrastructure. They've seen much more of networking content. Uh, give us your quick take on what's going on here at the, at the show and, and in the industry in terms of converged infrastructure. Sure, Dave. So, uh, yeah, definitely converged infrastructure is a big topic. IBM Pure Systems really uh, took IBM beyond kind of the blade server architecture. So, uh, when you and I were out there launched in April of 2012, we really felt that this was the next generation of kind of uh, compute. So, uh, if you look at the, the latest industry numbers, uh, blade server uh, revenue has started to decline, and uh, really cloud type operations, uh, hyperscale operations, and uh, environments that are built for more dense compute environments or where they're going. I had a chance to talk to really the Flex system guys and they said this is their workhorse uh, for the next uh, you know, five, 10 years in the architecture uh, because when IBM came out with the Blade Server back in 2001, it, it was a great technology. It had really high performance. It, it drove a lot of consolidation. It was a key player in the virtualization trend uh, for the last you know dozen years or so, but uh, Pure Systems is that new architecture that's going to drive them forward. Uh, and you know we, we've been watching all the horses in conversion infrastructure. The other thing that that's really important at this show is uh, IBM has a lot of the uh, MSPs, what they call the managed service providers, are here. Um, these are the people that are going to help bring IBM to more cloud environments. Uh, of course, IBM made the big acquisition of SoftLayer uh, last week. Uh, and uh, you know, looking at how Amazon's changing things with cloud, IBM, of course, is heavily in OpenStack. I know you talked to Ambu about that. Um, so you now they've got the OpenStack, they've got SoftLayer, which has some of the cloud stack, they've got service providers. So looking at all of these transformational uh, technologies that are helping to go beyond kind of traditional IT as we know it. Well, you know, Stu, you've got basically so the, 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 the endpoints of the vice, really. You've got Hadoop on one end, and you've got cloud, and the public cloud on the other end, which is absolutely you know, disrupting traditional businesses, you know, generally in storage specifically. And what Ambush Goyal and IBM set forth yesterday is what I would call a vision of storage as a platform. And essentially, you know, that is IBM's software-defined storage strategy. We heard last month with EMC and EMC World is now Viper. Uh, IBM is laying down the gauntlet. Ambush um, Goyal basically without mentioning EMC, tried to position EMC uh, Viper as uh, sort of uh, SDS one and a half, maybe even 2.0, uh, maybe even 1.0, uh, if I had to ask him you know, directly. Uh, but, but really trying to put forth a vision that IBM is moving toward the next generation of software defined storage. You know, good, good vendor positioning, but let's break that down and unpack that a little bit. Stu, so what do you need to basically get to uh, software defined storage? So the first one is obvious, you've got to abstract the underlying hardware, right? I mean, and that's something that is that is really table stakes. So IBM does it with single volume controller, NetApp does it. By the way, NetApp oh, Dave, Dave, I'd like to poke that up for a second. So, you know, SVC has been around for a while and it, it, it is without a doubt one of the leaders in storage virtualization, uh, but really there's got to be a difference between really virtualization and kind of the software defined environment. Uh, so, you know, how is this really automating the environment? Uh, if I look at what SVC does, you know, traditionally it's really a bunch of, you know, IBM, you know, disks behind it and, and it, it virtualizes that. Which yeah, so has I, think value, that, but I think that's really, again, so this couple things you need for software defined storage. One is virtualizing the underlying hardware infrastructure, but that's not, that's really 
it's not even table stakes, it's kind of fundamental. IBM does that with SBC, NetApp does that inherently, you know, guys like 3 Par obviously do yeah, that. Hitachi obviously HTS has obviously some. Yeah. Does that. And EMC does it, I guess, through VPlex. So, so that's sort of, okay, storage virtualization one-on-one, but then beyond that, you need to have um, a, another layer of abstraction, and that looks increasingly, it's becoming OpenStack or other platforms, VMware, OpenStack, et cetera. Uh, and then APIs into the, that back-end storage layer that allows you to access granular storage services through a RESTful API. And that's where most, most software-defined systems break down. So the questions that you should ask as a customer are, first of all, how do you abstract that hardware layer? You know, how do you do it? Do you do it with SVC? Do you do it as an inherent component of the system like NetApp does? You know, and what overheads does that bring? The second thing you want to ask as a customer is, can I go into, through an API, and provision uh, storage, not just capacity, but also performance? So in other words, can I ask for, through an API call, 50 gigabytes of storage and 1,000 IOPS, and then make that my policy, and then change that policy on the fly? And then I think the third thing is, what is the nature of that API? Is it a full-blown API? Is it robust? Can I actually make calls to granular storage services and fully exploit it from a higher level platform like OpenStack? So that's kind of what I'm taking away from this whole discussion. What would you add to that? Yeah, Dave, and, and uh, I totally agree. I know you had an interview yesterday with uh, the, the, the group that does what they call the software-defined environments. Um, and what I'd add to that, of course, is IBM plays across the stack. So uh, IBM has uh, you know, lots of things they're pushing in the network, in the software by network environment, and of course, um, really pure systems, the, the, this, this server and compute side um, is kind of filling out the complete stack. And IBM does have you know, a strong software portfolio because it's really that management, that automation layer uh, that needs to be able to pull all of these pieces together. Uh, Tivoli has a strong story. Um, I, I did talk to some of IBM's partner on the pure systems, and they said that the FSM, the management layer, uh, does require a little bit more time to mature, uh, but you know, at least it's going well in beta testings, and definitely some customers uh, have been kicking the tires and, and looking at, the, at this architecture. Now, one of the things that IBM is, is trying to make as a criterion of software defined storage is open source. Now, I don't necessarily think that's a criterion of that definition. I do, however, think it's a major advantage for any company that can participate in earnest in open source. Of course, IBM is very active in OpenStack. IBM has a lot of street cred in open source. It's made a lot of investments and a lot of money around open source. And so, when you look, actually, I wrote today uh, on, on the wiki, when you look at some of the what's, what's happening within Grizzly and within Cinder, these are the OpenStack, you know, Cinder is the- Well, the, well the David, stores, interesting OpenStack. point. Yeah. You, you could see that that the contributors are, of course, HP, IBM. Interestingly, SolidFire is a huge contributor. Uh, uh, Red Hat, obviously, is a huge contributor. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, we, we know that IBM has contributed to open source for a while. They were one of the early drivers of Linux. And of course, open source in general tends to pull dollars away from licenses. So it's away from the Microsoft, the Oracles, and the VMs of the world. And it transfers those dollars typically to services, which is a sweet spot for IBM. So you know, IBM, it's great to be open, but there is that underlying way that IBM makes good money off of putting together the solutions that are open data. Well, to me, the significance of this is essentially, as Amazon turned the data center into an API, IBM is essentially trying to turn the storage platform into an, an API and allow ISVs to actually add value on top of it. Royale yesterday gave the example of Actifio, and we know Actifio bringing things like you know data protection services to the marketplace, being able to exploit uh, IBM services from you know through the SVC. So very powerful model that he's putting forth. I think to me the reason this is so interesting is the market leader EMC is it's been a consumer internally, you know, you used to work there, an internal consumer of, of open source, but never been a purveyor of open source software. And it, it, it while it does contribute to OpenStack, it's not one of the leading contributors, but I think that will change and I think the, the race is going to be on to see who can leverage that open source better. Okay, or the best. Now so today we got a full day here. We're going to start off with some customers. Um, Adrian Ledger is here. He's the uh, director of IT and for infrastructure at SideQuest. And then Karim Abdullah of Sprint is going to be here. We're going to unpack some of the things that customers are doing uh, with IBM technology generally, and specifically we're going to learn about Flash. Uh, and then we've got a big, big, big day today. Uh, a lot of server infrastructure, a lot of converged infrastructure, a lot of storage talk, a lot of Flash talk. And so. So keep it right there. Uh, this is SiliconANGLE's Cube. We're live from IBM Edge, and we'll be right back right after this.